Words cannot describe the disappointment I feel towards Gush Entertainment's decision to make $70 premium as a thing. $70 for virtual pixels is basically a brand new game. I, I just hope that these new... Well, there's nine nations in the game now, so there's going to be, what, six or seven new premium vehicles to fill the voids where newer and, and more advanced aircraft types are going to be pushed beyond. I certainly hope that that at least the new rank allows for a little bit or at least a tiny bit of decompression in the, in the way that would benefit the game in the, its long term but the game's been going for 10 years I can see it probably having another lifespan of at least another 10 years in it uh, and it's probably not going to go anywhere being the top 19 uh, played games on the Steam uh, store it's a free to play game that everyone can get access to it's a game that is accessible it's a game that provides realistic but not full-on blown simulation style gameplay if that's your thing well there's dcs isle 2 microsoft flight simulator if you want more arcadey there's ace combat 7 project wingman and a, a whole host of other video games for example world of tanks as well and if you're sitting here scratching your head like me at the choice and decision of just horrible uh, ethics and business decisions 70 dollars is quite a lot of money and we discussed that in yesterday's video and today i thought about talking about war thunder's potential future at least when it comes to what could be potentially happening uh with with regards to what's happening in 2023 now we already know there's f-16 dials and cockpit instruments in the game files the a6e the tram was well discovered potentially early on as well and it in of itself was well a shock when it came out as a premium but again we have dev servers we have other things coming up so that's not going to be a too much of a drag at least on well a, a testing performance basis whether they're actually worth your money the answer is always no but 70 dollars <laughs> is still a lot of money regardless what's coming obviously eastern block and and western uh, vehicles I can see more armoured cars coming to game in the form of various other modifications of Western and Eastern Bloc nations, particularly when it comes to China, some wheeled and armoured vehicles that aren't the PTL-02 or whatever it's called. And maybe we'll be able to see maybe the BTRs, for example, some of the BTR series stuff. That'd be fantastic. For aircraft, I'd love to see more fleet air arm stuff for the UK, the Ferry Fulmar, or maybe, maybe some float planes for Italy. They've got three engine float plane bombers everywhere it'd be nice to see maybe even a japanese uh, search and rescue aircraft particularly the the flying boat that they have or did use back in the late 80s you know something something like a be6 but not quite like a be6 you know it'd be fantastic to see again just unique stuff that that would actually you know make people excited to play the game instead of just relying on battle passes and then premium vehicles to make the uniqueness in the game Obviously the SU-25 and the A-10 and the F-14 are already big items on their own. But what we don't have is the F-111 and potentially the MiG-29A, MiG, uh, the SU-27 at least said MiG-27. Uh, there are plenty of, of vehicles for them to add considering that the most of the hype around modern vehicles is a potential hazard. But those will come in due time. What I'd really love to see is enduring confrontation, realistic battles expanded. Give us a reason to play. Give us more rewards in that. Allow players to experiment in that, whether it's ground or whether it's air. Just let us do a little bit more. And, and uh, more game modes is really what I'm asking for here. Because that in itself will make gameplay either better or worse, depending on how you can do things. Gaja Entertainment can't make events worth a damn. But the player base who makes events, particularly Weeby and his missions and several other uh, sort of creators who make fantastic missions on the market, well, not the marketplace, on War Thunder Live. And Garjan don't really go, oh, we can, maybe we could take that idea. Maybe we could take some of the racing maps and implement them in, in the game. Maybe that'd be fun. But stuff like that. Because the community development kit is in very, very impressive. And creators like Averick and a heap of other people are incredibly talented and they spend a lot of time creating and making unique events that p could potentially be p really interesting if you were someone who was looking for a bit of diversification. You know, World War Mode is nice and all, but it isn't the end all, be end all, right? And I feel like Garzan has missed the mark here. They have beautiful maps that are horribly designed. 
they have really good sound effects, which the sound engineer and sound designer has to change every bloody patch. But for 2023, the best thing that they could do is not to add vehicles and instead maybe give us a, a wider plethora of game modes. Now we do have the Christmas event coming up. It'd be interesting to see what happens for the Christmas New Year's event. That'll be particularly interesting to see. And we've also got the Christmas sales as well. So there'll be that to look forward to. And obviously there is the new update. So th there is plenty of things, at least to start out with 2023. And I hope it isn't like new power where it's going to be premiums for years and then, well, rip matchmaker for anyone who isn't playing a premium aircraft or vehicle. USS Douglas is already in the game with its ship-to-ship -ship missiles, so it'd be interesting to see whether they'll carry that thought line or that, that train of thought down the line, so to speak. Maybe in addition of changing up things, adding maybe a bit more diversification in, in, in battle ratings would be nice, but they're never going to do that. Let's be real, they keep compressing it to, just to favour Matchmaker to say that, oh, queue times. And it really isn't in the best of places to really suggest those quality of life changes, because reality is, without any major update or vehicles or additions, the game basically, you know, relies on those constant content updates. What amazes me is, is a game like War Thunder can get away with what it gets away with, the controversies that it creates, and still maintain a relatively healthy, alive, and functional uh, user base. The thing is, without the advent of the, a lot of content being added towards the game, there is no real... Uh, War Thunder just isn't the same. If they stopped implementing vehicles or, or new content, new decals, new, new, new things, new sales, new whatever, the game would basically be dead on its heels. And that is probably the end of my rambling video today. I had no idea what I really wanted to talk about, so obviously looking forward is possibly going to be the best way of ensuring that, well, the optimism for the game stays high despite its bleak appearance and its, well, quite controversial changes, particularly in the last 48 hours. And with that being said, what do you think will come next year? And what do you want to see happen in War Thunder next year? I plan on only covering the game up until my anniversary, at which point I'll probably hang the hook up and, and, and go, go away for a while. But, thank you much for watching, and my name is Ash, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.